With Cubase 13, we saw the introduction of two new compressors in the Cubase stock plugins lineup. And in this video, I'm going to give you some tips over which compressor would be suitable for you to use for every mixing situation. Let's get started. So we have several compressors in Cubase now and you might be wondering, okay, how do I use each compressor? What each compressor is suitable for? So that's what I'm going to do here today. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about single band compressors. So I'm not going to be talking about multi-band compressors that we have in Cubase. So I'm going to talk about the compressor plugin, the standard compressor plugin, the vintage compressor, the tube compressor, the black valve and the Vox Comp. So let's get started and I'm going to start with the compressor plugin in Cubase. And this is it. Now, this is a very versatile compressor. You can use it on pretty much everything. And this goes for every one of these compressors. I would suggest that you experiment and check out what each compressor can do. But I'm going to give you some guidelines on where each compressor shines. One of the ways that I love using the compressor in Cubase is when I'm processing drums and I have some settings where I emulate some famous compressors like uh, the API, the SSL. So right here, as you can see, I have some settings that I use when I want to emulate the SSL kind of sound on the Cubase compressor. So I have a ratio of 4 to 1, an attack of 30 milliseconds. I have my release at 84 milliseconds and I have my analysis set to peak. So let's have a listen with and without. So what this compressor allows you to do is that it glues things together, it adds some punch, and also it makes the sound a little bit more tight. I can also see the gain reduction right here, so I can use my makeup gain to make up for the loss of gain. So listen to the snare, the kick drum, it adds quite a bit of punch and the whole sound is glued together really nicely. And like I said, this compressor you can use for pretty much everything, for vocals, for voiceovers, for guitars, for your master bass. Another really cool way to use this compressor is to use it for side chaining. So I use it to side chain the bass to the kick drum. If you'd like more information about any one of these compressors, of course, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. If we get enough requests, we're going to make a dedicated video about this. The next compressor that I'm going to show you is the Voxcom. Now, this was again introduced in Cubase 13, and this compressor is a miracle for vocals. And I'm going to show you exactly why it works so well. So what I have here is a track that's not mixed, but I have recorded a vocal that was recorded with healthy levels. So it peaks around minus 12, minus 8. So it's nice and dynamic. Let me show you how it sounds without Vox Comp. So have a look here at the peaks, right? So as you can see, the peaks are around minus four, minus six, nice and healthy. We're not close to picking or anything like that, but you can clearly tell that the vocal doesn't sit well in the mix at all. It has no chance competing with the guitars, the sims, the drums, the bass, all these things. Now, let me activate Voxcom, just one compressor, nothing fancy, and check what a difference it makes. Okay, just one compressor. I'm going to turn it on and off so that you can hear the difference again. So as you can hear now,
now all the parts are nice and clear. We can hear the words, we can hear what the lyrics say. Without it, you can't hear anything. Maybe some words here and there will poke out. And this all happens using one compressor and Voxcom couldn't be any simpler to use. You just pull down the threshold right here until it sounds right and you're good to go. If I can give you a tip here, I would probably follow it up with maybe the black valve to give it a little bit of warmth, a little bit of extra push and catch anything that remains if I want to polish my vocal a little bit more. But even just using the Voxcom, you'll have great results on vocals straight away, even on a big is a mix like this. Next we have Black Valve. This was introduced in Cubase 13 and this is a very colorful compressor. This will allow you to give your tracks a little bit of warmth but also add a little bit of tube saturation. In this case I'm using this on this mini Moog bass line and let's listen to how it sounds. So as you can hear, it makes this bass line a little bit more even, but we also add quite a bit of color with this. And in order to do this, you can play with a drive right here. The more you drive this, the more you add to the preamp circuit. And then you can also drive the gain here for more compression in tandem with the peak reduction control right here. So let's start from scratch and let me show you how I use this. Sometimes I like to use this like this, even without any compression at all. So just adding the drive to add a little bit of color there. And it works great with bass, it works great with vocals. This is not so fast like the vintage compressor, but it works beautiful on these kinds of sources. If you want to drive the compressor even more, you can just start adding your gain right here and you get even more compression and color. And I'm playing this along with the drums so that you can hear how the relationship changes between the two instruments. The black valve allows the bass to cut through without suffocating the drums. It almost sounds like I added more punch to the drums as well when I'm adding the black valve. So my favorite uses is bass and vocals, but of course feel free to use it with any material because it sounds great. The next compressor that I love using for bass and vocals is the tube compressor and this is an optical compressor emulation. So again, it has lots of character, but at the same time it's creamy and soft. Let's try it out on this bass line again. As you can see, we have the low and high ratio. This will make a big difference in the sound. I like to crank up the drive quite a bit with this one. And you also have the character control if you want to change the tonal characteristic of the compressor. It also has an auto release function if you want to. And again, you can see how compact it makes this bass. And you can also do parallel if you use the mix knob right here, like with every compressor that I've shown you this far. 
And the last compressor that I want to show you in this video is the Vintage Compressor Mark III. This is a FET style compressor, so that means that it's very fast, it's very grabby, it's great for parallel processing. I love using it for parallel compressing vocals. Also, it's great for snares if you want to get this big punchy sound. Let's use it on this same drums here and let's see the difference because it's massively different to the normal compressor plugin. Let's have a listen. So as you can hear, this is a drastic, really impressive compressor. And one little trick that I want to show you straight away, especially if you're going to use it for drums, is try out the punch mode here on the attack. This will give you a lot of transient information for your drums. So if you have some drums that are a little bit soft, try and use the punch mode here. It's really powerful. Now, the great thing is that you can parallel process straight away. So if I want, I can turn my mix down and I can introduce this compressed signal to my uncompressed drums. And this will give your drums some sustain and body. Great compressor for drums, but also great for vocals. So as you can see, we have tons of options when it comes to compression in Cubase. In the comments down below, let us know what's your favorite way to use the Cubase compressors. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.